What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful fall day here in Pennsylvania. A little brisk, about 48 degrees, 50 degrees out today. And I'm out in the cornfield that's been recently picked. And I uh, got the Jeep here behind me. We're gonna go over something today that maybe you've heard of and maybe you haven't heard of. Uh, it's called a Speedo Healer. So that being said, let's get right to it. What the heck is a speedo healer if you have a lifted jeep and you have bigger tires you're going to know that your speedometer is going to be off uh, by several miles per hour depending on your size tires depending on the size of uh, what your factory tires were uh, whatever it may be um, you can correct this several different ways but this is the way that i had to correct it i had to use what's called a speedo healer and it plugs right in line of your uh, factory harnesses down at the transfer case and I'll show you that here in a second but you can, you can do this this way or you can do it another way there's two different ways to do it one is with a speedo healer and it does it with a little uh, module and you have to calculate it and put the right programming in to get it right but the other way is to put one of these in it's called a speedo gear and it's basically a little cluster gear and that's what measures your uh, rpm i'm not really 100 sure how it works i just know that is exactly how you uh how it works with a stock transfer case so if you get underneath your jeep and you go under there and it hasn't been messed with or hasn't been lifted very much and it has the stock transfer case output shaft which is a slip yoke style shaft you'll see a little a slip yoke style drive shaft on the back and you will see a little like harmonic balancer thing you'll see right in this little area that you have to change the speedo gear now there's different teeth and you have to go on quadratech or online and find those speedometer gears and find out what tooth gear works for what size tire you have and ratios and all that stuff and you can do it that way but i can't do it that way it doesn't work for me and i'll show you why here right now I have what is called a slip yoke eliminator. And when you get a bigger lift kit, a lot of you guys are gonna know what I'm talking about. When you get a bigger lift kit and it puts your drive line back here on a steeper angle, the slip yoke style binds and it doesn't work right. So long story short, you have to do this right here, which is called a slip yoke eliminator. What you have to do then is you have to get a double gar double carton drive shaft. I have an Adams drive shaft right here. It goes back to my 48.8, which is trust. It's a very nice solid axle from a Ford Explorer. Uh, that's not what we're talking about today. But as you can see, I have nowhere to go. I have what I guess you would consider a tone ring in here. Um, I'm not sure if this is a shorty. I'm not sure what style uh, slip yoke eliminator this was. This is actually was put on by the previous owner. He actually had that put on by a shop and it's uh, been flawless so far. It doesn't leak anything uh, at this point in time. But as you can see, I have nowhere to go with my actual cluster gear. All I have is like a tone ring in there that measures the speed of the vehicle. But what I did, as you can see right here, it's already installed. This here is your factory plug, and this is the harness plug over here. And this is your Speedo Healer. Cable comes out right there, and it plugs right in line. As you can see, this comes off the transfer case, and this comes off the harness from the vehicle, and it plugs right in line, and I have it uh, snagged right up, snagged. I have it run right up through with the actual wiring harness itself, zip tied up to the front, and I'll show you that module here in a second. You don't have to run any power, any grounds, anything to it. You just have to plug it in and go from there. So again, this is underneath the Jeep. You plug it in right here in line of the harness, and I'll take you up under the hood and show you the unit itself. So with that run all the way up, from the transfer case along the side, the tra uh, passenger side of the transmission, it comes right up through back there behind the vacuum line and runs right up here to the actual unit. Again, there is nowhere you have to plug in for power or ground. It pulls power right from the factory harness. So it plugs in, it comes up, I have it looped around here and it plugs right into the unit. And I have it Velcroed on like so. So this is the unit itself, let me pull it off here. This is the brains behind the whole thing and i'll put a picture in right now a screenshot of how you program this i'm not going to go through the details but you have to get your vehicle set at 60 miles an hour so you have to get a gps reading there's plenty of apps on your iphones androids whatever that show you the actual speed you're going at 60 miles an hour so you have to calculate your actual speed and your indicated speed so you have to find how far off your speedometer is and you have to put it in this formula right here and that shows you 
what programming you have to put in there. So let me show you, when you cycle the key on and off, let me see if I can set the phone down and get you to see what I have to do here. There we go. We'll be there. All right, let me go cycle the key. There you can see how that works, but you set your positive and your negative, whether you're uh, over or under on your speed, your actual versus your indicated, and you set it with these two buttons in this area. And then again, there's a little Velcro thing that comes with it, and you just simply take it and mount it up wherever you prefer. I found this little spot right here to be pretty handy. This mounts right there. The harness fits right above the loom on the firewall, and that is where it's at. Really inconspicuous and just out of the way. And I'm telling you right now, it works flawlessly. It is seamless, and once you get the speeds dialed in and get your, your uh, programming completely accurate and right on the money, my speedometer is right on the money. It is perfect. No more worrying about being five miles over the speed limit and having to justify accordingly how fast I'm going or how, uh, how slow I'm going so I don't want to get any speeding tickets. So this thing isn't super cheap. A cluster gear is definitely a lot cheaper, but that wasn't an option for me. I had to get something a little different because my slip yoke limiter uses a tone ring or some other way to count revolutions and uh, calculate the mileage. So it looks again complicated on the uh, on the paperwork, but it's, it's not hard at all. It's very easy to program and uh, it's easy to clear out if you mess it up because it's 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 super easy. It's, it takes maybe 15 minutes total to install the whole thing and program it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found this video informative and check the link down in the description. I'll put a link to it. I'm not affiliated with Speedo Healer in any way, shape or form. I'll just show you where I got it. And uh, that way you can look up and find a little more information on it as well. It's nothing new. This has been out for a while, but I just wanted to share with everybody because I, I thought maybe it could help you if you can't change your Speedo gears out because you have a slip yoke eliminator like I do and you want your speedometer corrected. So thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Let's just take a minute here if you're still watching the video. Thanks so much for still watching. Just take a minute and just appreciate how uh, pretty she is. Got it all shined up. Yeah, not really. It's, it's still kind of dirty and dusty. Got to get around on some trails, but unfortunately the weather is kind of closing in. This year got away from us with doing the head and everything like that. We uh, we didn't really get out on the trails. Had a baby. My wife had a baby. <laughs> not me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, uh, it's just been a very busy year. Very thankful, a lot going on, but, uh, yeah, didn't get nearly as much trail time as I would have liked, but it's always next year and we can always go this winter. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share with you guys, uh, some shots of the Jeep and Stroker is running pretty good right now. Knock on wood. Seems to have everything sorted out. I sure hope. So if you haven't done so, definitely go back through. I'll put some links here. I'm not sure how YouTube is going to throw it up, but you can go check out the engine swap. If you haven't seen that, if you're new to the channel, uh, if you just like to go check it out, uh, we did swap the uh, 4.7 stroker in here and pulled the 4.0 out and uh, we had our ups and downs along the way. So again, everybody, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the love and support in the comments. So uh, see you on the next one.